Welcome to Overanalyzing Vlogs, where I think too much about something. Or do I? Today's video draws very heavily from the work of Sarah Ahmed, in particular her book The Cultural Politics of Emotion. Her chapter on love and nationalism is available free online, link in the doobly-doo, and it comes very highly recommended. White supremacists, which is to say racists, are correctly identified as hate groups. But if you read white supremacist websites or listen to what they say, and I've done that so you don't have to, you'll find that despite being correctly identified as hate groups, they brand themselves as love groups. The Aryan Nations and Stormfront talk about their love for the white race. The loyal white knights of the Ku Klux Klan say that they're not a hate group, they prefer to focus on their love for their race, though according to their website, which I have here, they do hate drugs, homosexuality, abortion, and interracial relationships. There's a common white supremacist meme about defending white children, children being traditionally subjects of love, and let's not forget the golden one. The second most famous Swedish YouTuber ever to use YouTube to distribute anti-Semitic messages. He is a <clears throat> nationalist who likes to talk about his love for his people and his country, or at least his country as he ideally imagines it to be, and well, that's the kicker, isn't it? Oh, by the way, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the terms white supremacist, white nationalist, and racist interchangeably, because functionally, they are interchangeable. In before, everyone who's going to tell me in the comments that white nationalism isn't the same thing as white supremacy, they're both rooted in the same garbage, and more or less, most of the people who tell you that they're different are trying to sell one version of them to you. Speaking of which, how come there's this branding, this wallpaper of love over ideologies that quite obviously hold most of the world's population in contempt. Well, maybe part of it is that nowadays people are a lot less willing to openly identify as racist as they used to be. I mean, even 50 years ago, quite explicit racism was a lot more commonplace than it is now. Racism nowadays is quite correctly seen as a very bad thing to contribute to. And since white supremacists want not only to have their ideology, but also to spread it, they know that a little bit of PR is necessary. They know that it's necessary to go, we're not a hate group, we're not racist, we're just... whatever. But what kind of love is this that they're claiming they have here? Freud distinguishes between two different kinds of love, and we don't have to completely buy into everything Freud says for this distinction to be quite useful here. He talks about the love of the self, narcissistic love, and the love of the other. The love that white supremacists like to talk about is often cashed out in terms of protection. Protecting white women, protecting the nation, protecting white children against the racial other. But, and here's the really important thing, that protection is to be on their terms not on the terms of the person being protected. So the loyal white knights of the KKK will talk about defending white women, but that won't include defending a white woman's right to control her own body by getting an abortion. That won't include defending a white woman's right to have a relationship with another woman. That won't include defending a white trans woman. Similarly, they will talk about defending their nation and their people, but they don't mean defending the indigenous people of America. They don't mean defending African Americans or Mexican Americans who are just as much Americans as they are. No, they mean white Americans. The ideal of the nation as they imagine it. And there, I think we see what this so-called love really is. It's the love of the self. It's narcissistic love. It's, I'll love you as long as you're sufficiently like me. So white, above all, but also cis, straight, uh, sometimes Christian, and conforming to traditional gender roles. It's not the kind of love that says, I want you to be happy on your terms, whatever happiness means for you. It's the kind of love that says, I want you to be happy on my terms, which is really just another way of saying, I want to be happy, and you are a tool for that. It's selfish love, it's like narcissism. Oh really? You think the guy with the YouTube channel dedicated to how glorious and magnificent he is might be a little full of himself? I mean, to be fair, he's already got a YouTube channel, it doesn't get much more narcissistic than that. The love that racists claim to have is just the desire to see the self as ideal and then reproduce that self. Not really to engage with or love the other on their terms at all, but in reality to destroy that other and, where possible, just replace it with more self. It's a really, really twisted version of the Christian command, love thy neighbour as thyself. You'll notice, by the way, that the figure of the racial other 
as someone against whom loved ones must be protected, is really central to this ideology. That love is cashed out in terms of protecting people against that other, and providing the impetus to destroy that other and, where possible, remake it into more of the self. So without that racial other being there, that love has no way in which it can be exercised. It has no territory which the self can colonise. Which might explain why white supremacists tend also to pit themselves against modern scientific understandings of things like gender, sexuality and race which show us that these concepts are a little bit more woolly than maybe we once thought, and that maybe prompt us to question why we tend to construct the differences in the way that we do. And racists can't abide that. They want all others to be like themselves. They do not want to be like the other, or to realise that the other is perhaps not so different after all. They view that as a form of pollution, sometimes actually literally pollution of the blood, as if such a ridiculous idea was possible. And in a way, uh, that's, that's almost a little bit sad. I mean, the deepest forms of love that I've ever experienced have been the love of another person on their own terms, and in ways that makes them happy. The love of the not-self, without the desire to remake them into the self. I don't pity them particularly, because uh, that would be a little bit patronising. They do choose their modes of political engagement, and they could choose otherwise any time, and also they're racists, so... Eh. But the point is, love plays a particular role in political discourse, and when people talk about it, I find it useful to just check in with myself and ask, are they really talking about the love of the other? allowing the other to value their life on their own terms? Or are they really just talking about the narcissistic love of self? But maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Or am I?